Hi, this is Core Dynamics Garage Clips. I'm Elizabeth and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what you might want to know before you start adding in Core Dynamics to your routine. Whether you're a Group X instructor or a Pilates instructor, been doing Core Dynamics 1 for a while, this is just to reiterate some points to help you be successful with this workout. So first and foremost, this workout is meant to be high energy, dynamic, moving, fun. Okay, that's the first point. So you're gonna see times where you're thinking, that's more of a Pilates exercise, that should really be slow down, thinking in more control. We know you can do that kind of workout if you want to, but we wanna teach you how you can take something that's more mind-body and still have this loud kind of exciting music, but still make it more mind-body and still keep that fun and energetic pace going. So that's what you're gonna see throughout our routine. You'll also see is demonstrate sometimes even on different sides of the body, different ways to change the tempo and the speed to meet your participants' needs. That's first and foremost. The next thing with respect to the workout itself, that first section where we're doing lunges on the floor to the glide board, that can be very challenging with respect to body awareness, with respect to control, with respect to being able to weight your body appropriately from the floor up onto that of the glide board so the glide board remains still. It is nice to be able to have some tools and props around to make your client successful. For instance, you might put on that slide distance regulator for some of your participants. If there is a chair nearby, I don't know, maybe you're working one-on-one, -on -one, you might have that participant use the chair for support, or you might even like have a weight bar, one here, fancy that, that they can use, even if it's just for support and use one arm with the movement patterns, but they can use their weight through that weight bar as they lunge onto the glide board and lunge onto the floor. So they just have a little bit of support with that so they feel successful in the movement pattern. So when you set your room up, remember, just add a little bit of things around to get your clients maybe what they're gonna need to feel successful. The next thing I wanna talk about is that this workout typically is around 30 minutes like most of our group formats. If it's gonna be 30 minutes, you're probably gonna take out some exercises so that you can ensure that everyone gets a proper workout and safe workout because you're going to have some expl explanation to do when you start teaching this routine to people because many of the exercises are new that quadruped position or the hands and knees position some people call it horse stance when you're sitting there and your arms are reaching in all different planes that's unfamiliar if you're trying to keep a beat of the music and move fluidly you might be able to move through it but you might find yourself having to really slow down to teach that movement pattern. So start to pick and choose which exercises you might need to take out because of the coordination or the complication effect and add those in as people feel more and more successful if you need that 30 minutes. Otherwise, probably give yourself a good 45 minutes to ensure that you get through the workout and you're able to talk through each exercise and teach them the appropriate sequence in the appropriate way. All right. This workout is called Core Dynamics, and we infuse a lot of Pilates-like exercises with into it. With that said, if you're unfamiliar to Pilates and you think, I can't teach that section, I'm just gonna leave it out, never fear. Most of the Pilates exercises we've put into and infused within our workout are ones that you might be familiar with within the strength or even personal training arena. That was our intention, is for you to be able to teach the Pilates exercises because you have enough of the background from teaching there and there's enough similarity with other exercises that you have taught before. With that said, the Pilates fundamentals that we use of concentration, the breath being important, isolation, centering or core strength, control, fluidity, precision, routine, all those are infused within all the exercise I would say and even more within that of the Pilates exercises. So with that, you might take a time to go a little bit slower with some of the Pilates exercises and focus in on the breath. Maybe take some time to focus in on isolating one little muscle group so you can figure out what is weak of that muscle group and so you can factor that in into the big picture, get that little one strong to bring it into the big picture so the whole movement pattern is more fluid, hence with the fluidity. So that's the intention of our Pilates exercises is not to say, oh, it's not Pilates in any way, but take some of those aspects of the concentration, the breath, the control, the centering or the strength, the fluidity, and put that into some of the Pilates-like exercises. And remember that when you're teaching it, it's okay to slow down. And with that said, 
Some of you might be Pilates instructors and say, I don't really want to teach a group class, and this has led to a certain count, a certain beat, and a certain rhythm. I'm right there with you. Use the music as a motivation factor. Don't worry about the counts and the sets and the reps. Worry about the routine. Think about how you're going to keep this fun and energetic, the two main points that I mentioned in the beginning. And think about using that music just as a motivator. And you can have the music really slow and relaxed and calm and make it a very Pilates-like exercise, very mindful movement. Or you can keep it high energy and fun. It's up to you. So feel free to make this your own and good luck.